Hi, welcome back to Neural Splendor. So now we're going to finish our series on troubleshooting fault code 559 on the ISX 2350 15 liter engine. We've looked at a lot of different parts of the fuel system and tonight we're going to be focusing on the pump head, the aluminum housing that bolts to the pump head, the fuel actuator control that bolts into the aluminum fuel housing, and then we're going to be looking at the flow coming out of the rail. So the tool that we put on the rail, it has a, a calibrated spring in it. We block off all the ports in the rail, we put this tool on, we put a drain line off the end of the tool into a bucket which gets transferred into a beaker that measures milliliters and when we transfer it we have started a timer because we're going to be going for 30 seconds of fuel flow. And then we have the engine not running, it's cranking, so we have to take cranking speed into account. So what we do is we data log the test, and then we go into Excel, which we can open the log in, and we average the cranking speed in that log. And that is a valid way to use the chart you're going to see later on to figure out if your flow is in the good range, the maybe range, or the fail range. So uh, we had a recon head on the pump. We had a the original fuel housing and actuator. And our first test, we had a failure and so we had to do some modifications. We were actually surprised. We thought it was going to be fine, and it wasn't. So you're going to be uh, stunned at the difference. I was stunned because I wasn't expecting what we came up with. But at the end of the day, we were, um, we were golden. Everything was right where it needed to be, and the engine ran great, and it's not going to have any problems. It'll run for a long time, barring a a part failure, of course. So uh, I wanted to say up front, we looked up the specs by engine number and they had changed a little bit. So you always need to double check your specs and I'm talking about pump head return flow. The minimum flow we were allowed to have is 125 milliliters and 30 seconds of cranking. The maximum was 525. Those numbers, the top number used to be a little bit lower. Now, we ended up under the minimum, which you'll see. And so the instructions in the test told us to change the aluminum housing that bolts to the back of the pump. We changed that housing and it made a substantial change in what came out of that, uh, pump, that return line from the pump head. So let's get into the videos, and I've got some photos in there, and I'm going to show you uh, the graph that we use to, to check if the pump head and fuel system is making the proper amount of flow, because if it's not, you're going to have 559s. Five, five and that aluminum housing that bolts on the back of the pump head is an important piece, because it can make or break that pump head's ability to flow properly. And then you've got the actuator that plugs into that housing. I want you to know that inside that housing, it's just not a block of aluminum. There are some pieces in there. Nothing is serviceable. You can also have a hairline crack form inside that housing, and then you'll have problems with 559s. You will not have a fuel leak. There'll be no fuel leaks around the pump, None of that problem at all. It'll just be, why do I have low fuel pressure fault code lights on now? So let's take a look at it again. We put on a new gear pump. We ended up putting on a new aluminum housing, which came with the new actuator. So we just installed it. We had already put on a recon pump head. And the tool that we're using to check the flow with has a calibrated spring. So it makes the rail build to a certain pressure before it lets that start to flow fuel. 
and that's how Cummins is able to accurately measure in the field what that pump head's doing. Let's take a look. Before we get started, we put a new style gear pump on this. We needed to replace the lines and we ordered in the other lines and got these new styles. So we decided to put them on. On the left there, you can see it idle. This pump will give us about 175 PSI and at 1800 RPM, it was up at about 190, 85 to 90 PSI. Okay, we're going to be starting our test. We're measuring fuel return. We're using Cummins Insight to raise the rail pressure to 29,000 PSI. And here we go. You'll notice we're timing this. It's a 30 second test. And we want to see how much fuel we get in 30 seconds. We have to have between 125 milliliters minimum to 525 milliliters maximum. And if we're not inside of those limits, then the uh, directions and the test that are found on QuickServe Online will tell us what we need to do. So here we are, we're at our 30 seconds, and let's take a look and see how much fuel we have in that container. And we have only about 90 milliliters, so we are about 35 milliliters shy. And by the way, we did this test three times in a row and it came out about the same all three times. The test instructions said that if you had less than 125 milliliters of return flow, then replace the aluminum housing on the back of the pump head. So we did. The new housing came with a new actuator in it. We bolted it up and then we primed the fuel system and then we did the test again. Let's see what happened. Now, as we start this test, let's do a recap. We replaced the gear pump, all the fuel lines. We replaced the pump head. And we went ahead and replaced the aluminum manifold on the back of the pump. And we replaced the actuator, which actually came with the aluminum housing. That's the fuel actuator. And we have a 150 PSI in our filter head. So that's what that new gear pump's putting out. Here we have our 30 seconds are up, and it looks like we've got considerably more fuel. Let's take a look and see how we did. And we have just about 480 milliliters of fuel. Now we're going to remove all of our fuel lines, and we're going to put block offs on the common rail. So the only line that's on that common rail is of steel supply line from the high pressure pump head. We install the service tool that has the calibrated spring in it that is going to pressurize the rail and when the rail gets to a certain pressure it will allow fuel to escape the tool and go down that return line into a, our calibrated milliliter beaker. And then there is an actual graph that we look at to determine if we're good. To do the last test you put your line off of your calibrated tool on the rail into that beaker and you crank the engine for two 15 second cranks. We used Insight to data log our engine RPM so that we knew what the cranking speed was. You'll see why we did that in a minute. Then we took that uh, the results of that data log into Microsoft Excel and we used Excel to average all the numbers because we're recording about two, two uh, lines every second. So about every 500 milliseconds we're getting a reading, RPM reading, and we cranked it for 30 seconds. So we averaged all those together and then we used that information and here we had 170 milliliters of fuel come out of that common rail in the 30 seconds. And we're going to take a look now at the uh, test result graph that's found in QuickServe Online to see if our fuel system is good to go. This is my beautiful artistic rendition of the graph that you see in QuickServe Online. I did it because I wanted to uh, have color in here to help you 
see what's going on. So we see the gray in the center between the two yellow lines and it says poor. If your result is in there, your fuel system's marginal. You're probably going to start seeing 559s crop up on long hard poles at full power, full throttle, where you're using a lot of fuel. Uh, that'd be like 1800 RPM, 1850 at full power. We are above the yellow line in the white area and our average RPM cranking came out to about 155 and our fuel was 170 or milliliters. So on the left we've got the milliliters and across the bottom is the RPM and you can see the two intersecting purple dashed lines and we are good to go. That's a very healthy pump head, very healthy fuel system. Well, I know what you're probably thinking. Did he have a red shirt on when he started this video? I'm not sure. So we finished our troubleshooting of the ISX fuel system with 559s. I want to stress to you a few points you have to keep Keep in mind, always remember, number one, go for the fuel filters first. Make sure fuel can get to the engine. Number two, go through the tests in the order that Cummins lays the tests out. If you think about all we went through in the last few weeks with these videos, it does make sense, the progression that we took. We started at the low side of the fuel system, work our way to the high side. This last section that we did tonight, if you don't have that service tool on the rail, you just can't do it. So you're guessing. Uh, in our case, because we'd already changed the pump head, once we knew that the uh, flow was correct, which it wasn't, we had to change that aluminum housing. Once that was correct, we probably could have stopped because we were done. We knew it was going to be okay. But we went ahead and did that test anyway so that you could see the volume. And I especially wanted to show you that graph where you have to take a look at that and figure out where you're at. If your pump head falls in that gray area up towards the top, I wouldn't panic. If you have to run it a while and you can't afford to change it, run it. It'll probably be okay. Inside that pump head, there are um, high pressure mach machine seats, just like you would find inside of a, a nozzle and a nozzle, a fuel injector nozzle. And those seats degrade after time, and so you start getting leakage in the pump head. Uh, we pulled one of the pumping chambers out of the old head, and it actually had a crack in this high pressure seat, and so fuel was leaking by that so for in essence you only had one chamber pumping now i want to say on the brand new engines the 2450s that pump head has two steel lines one for each chamber they are totally separate so if you lose one pumping element it doesn't affect the other one as long as the return check valves are in place the return check valves are the check valves that don't let the fuel in the rail go back down to the low pressure side. And they are in that new style pump head. So uh, that was a design change by Cummins. I think it was a good one. Good luck with your troubleshooting. Remember, think through the process clearly. Don't ever load the parts cannon and fire away because all you're doing is throwing the money in your wallet up in the air. Do systematic good troubleshooting or find a shop that can do that. Uh, find a mechanic that can do it, and you'll be just fine. Thanks again for watching Neural Splendor. Take care.